Welcome to the Builder Knowledge Channel. In this video we will be covering roofing. We will cover the estimating process for roofing material, which includes underlayments, flashing, roof cement, and exterior treatments, such as asphalt shingles, wood shingles and wood shakes. We will begin learning roofing materials and methods, starting with underlayments. Underlayments protect sheathing from moisture until shingles are placed. They provide additional weather protection from wind-driven rainwater that may penetrate under shingles. They prevent direct contact between shingles and sheathing, which is important when asphalt shingles are used and are always used under asphalt and fiberglass shingles, however, not always required under wood shingles and shakes. It is applied over the entire roof surface as soon as the sheathing installation has been completed. Underlayment requires 2-inch top lap at horizontal joints and a 4-inch side lap or end lap at end joints of the underlayment. Laps at the hips are 6 inches. The ridges are 6 inches as well as the valleys. Most underlayment will have lap lines already on it. Next is flashing. Flashing protects roof areas that are vulnerable to water leakage. Flashing is typically galvanized metal, but can be powder coated to math your roof design. Flashing comes in various shapes. Used at the eave. Used at the rake. Used around a roof projection. Used on an open valley. Used on a closed valley. Used around a chimney. Used at a roof and vertical wall intersection. Next let's cover roof cement. This can be a sticky subject, if you have used this before, you know it sticks to everything. Used for installing eave flashing for flashing assemblies, or for cementing tabs of asphalt shingles, and laps in sheet metal, and lastly for repairing roofs. There are several types for use on a roof. Plastic asphalt cement. Lap cement. Quick setting asphalt adhesives. Roof coatings. And primers. On these adhesives you must always follow the manufacturer's instructions. Now let's go over the different roof exterior treatments that you can place. The first will be asphalt and fiberglass strip shingles. They typically come in 12 by 36 inch strips with 27 strip shingles per bundle. And typically takes three to five bundles per square of roof. On small roofs up to 30 feet long. Strip. Shingles can be laid starting at either end when the roof surface is more than 30 feet long. It is usually best to start at the center and work both ways. Start from a chalk line perpendicular to the eaves and ridge. We use chalk lines to achieve the proper horizontal and vertical placement of the shingles. So when we are setting up from the eave, our first chalk line from the eave should allow for the starter strip and or the first course of shingles to overhang the drip edge, one-fourth to three-eighths of an inch. When laying shingles from the center of the roof, toward the ends, snap a number of chalk lines between the eaves and ridge. These lines will serve as reference marks for starting each course. Then a starter strip is used to back up the first course of shingles and fill in the space between the tabs. Use a strip of mineral surfaced roofing nine inches or wider of a weight and color to match the shingles. Reminder the nails you use to apply asphalt roofing must have a large head, 3 8 to 7 16 inch in diameter, and a sharp point. The number of nails used and their correct placement are both vital factors in the proper application of roofing material. For three tab shingles, use a minimum of four nails per strip. Though some application specifications may require six nails per shingle. 
The next exterior treatment is wood shingles. Wood shingles are among the oldest types of roof. Coverings. Apply it when a rustic architectural effect is desired. They are commonly available in three standard lengths. 16, 18, and 24 inches. The 16-inch length is the most popular. It has five but thicknesses per two inches of width when it is green. This means five butts stacked on top of each other total two inches in thickness. When packed in bundles, it will take four bundles to cover 100 square feet of wall or roof with a five-inch exposure. Next, let's talk about wood shakes. Wood shakes similar to shingles, but are typically split rather than sawed from cedar logs. Splitting produces a rougher and more rustic appearance than shingles. Shakes also come in different types. The first is taper split. Just like the name states these are cut in a taper. Next is straight split. And yes you probably have guessed by the name, these shakes do not have a taper. And then we have hand split and resawed shakes. These shakes are split and then resawed at a taper. Shakes are available in random widths, starting from 4 inches and in standard lengths of 18, 24, and 32 inches. They are usually packed in bundles of 20 square feet, with 5 bundles to the square. Next let's learn a bit of roll roofing or rolled roofing. Rolled roofing material is made of organic or inorganic felt, saturated with asphalt, and has a viscous bituminous coating. It can be installed by either exposed or concealed nailing. Exposed nailing is less expensive than concealed nailing, but does not last as long. Bitumens are used with several types of roofing systems. You have asphalt, which is usually a product of the distillation of petroleum. And also coal tar pitch, which is a byproduct of the cooking process in the manufacture of steel. Next, we will go on to tiles. This is widely used in the southwest part of the United States. Originally, tiles were thin, solid units made by shaping moist clay in molds and drying them in the sun or in a kiln. They have now come to include a variety of tile shaped units made of clay. Portland cement, and other materials. Tiles are durable, attractive, and resistant to fire. However, because of their weight, they usually require additional structural framing members and heavier roof decks. Before we go any further, let's cover some general safety requirements for roofing wood frame structures. We need to be sure we research job-specific safety equipment and procedures in the 29 CFR 1926 to accommodate project requirements. Depending on the project requirement you may require for sloped roofs. Full body harnesses with self-retracting lanyard, SRL. Roof brackets or anchors for anchorage points, designed for 5,000 pounds per person. Or slide guards. If working on a flat roof, you may require a full body harness. Restraining system and or an SRL. Or a warning line system, 6 to 10 feet from leading edge or temporary guardrails. Personnel working inside warning line system do not require fall protection. Then on roof loading. Look at equipment and materials and ensure the structure will support the load. Now let's see how to close up a valley using wood shingles. Wood shingles come in grade numbers, one being best and four being worst. Number one, two, or three grade shingles are used for slopes of roofs 312 or greater and for exterior walls. Number four grade shingles are for starter course of roof eaves only. You need to apply 15 pound felt paper to valley before flashing. And then install 26 gauge or heavier metal flashing extending 12 inches from valley center in each direction. You will then place shingles to form a 6-inch gutter down the valley. You must cut shingles to form a straight line down the valley. Hot-dipped, zinc-coated nails recommended for wood shingles. 
Use two nails per shingle, three quarters inch from edge and one and a half inches above exposure. Do not overdrive the nail, the nail head should rest above surface of the shingle. Now let's see how to close up a valley using wood shakes. Shakes are similar to shingles, with a few differences. They are thicker, therefore require longer nails. They are longer, therefore have a greater exposure. They are rougher and uneven, therefore require underlayment placed under each course and extended down to the bottom edge of the next row as the shakes are installed. Other than the noted differences that I have explained, shakes are installed the same as shingles. How to make roof projections watertight using wood shingles or shakes. To make roof projections watertight, you must allow a 1 inch minimum clearance of the shingle or shake edges around the projection. And also keep the edge of the projection flashing flange a minimum of 2 inches from the edge of the shingle or shake joint. And you must be sure that the shingle or shake nails do not penetrate the projection flashing flange. Okay, it's time to cover tile roofing and sheet roofing systems. We will begin with the tile roofing systems. Tiles are placed on spaced or solid sheathing that conforms to building code requirements for the anticipated loads. Spaced sheathing normally requires a minimum of 1 by 6, spanning a maximum of 24 inches between rafters. Underlayment material must be at least number 30, asphalt saturated felt, installed with a minimum 2 inch head lap and 6 inch side lap. Placing flashing on the eaves may be required in cold climates. Battens are frequently required under roofing tiles for installation over solid sheathing to provide positive anchorage for the tiles. The field tiles are placed in vertical and horizontal alignment. The tiles are then placed from left to right. Local building codes must be checked for the tile nailing schedule. A cant strip is then installed at the eaves, it must be twice the thickness of the battens to properly slant the first course of tiles. If your cant strip is incorrect, you first course will be at a different slant or degree from the rest of the roof. If you are using rake tiles to finish gable ends, the field tiles are cut and held back 1 to 2 inches from the outside edge of the sheathing. Make sure your ridge and hip tiles are nailed or wired to a 2 by 3 nailer strip fastened to the roof. A bead of roofer's mastic is applied. Where the ridge tiles overlap. The junction where the ridge and hip tiles rest on the field tiles is weatherproofed with mortar or an approved dry ridge hip. System. Now moving on to sheet, metal, roofing systems. Sheet, metal, roofing systems use roll-formed panels, manufactured from aluminum, copper, zinc, and galvanized steel. They can be preformed and or textured to provide the panels with the appearance of shingles or tiles. They are secured in place using clips that are concealed inside the seams. The clips are attached to the roof sheathing using lag bolts. While securing the roof in place, the clips also allow the panels to expand and contract with temperature changes, reducing the chance of roof leakage. Next is liquid membrane roof coatings, also known as built-up roof covering. Not a favorite of builders. Built-up roof covering consists of several layers of tar rag felt, asphalt rag felt, or asphalt asbestos felt set in a hot binder of melted pitch or asphalt bitumen. Each layer of built-up roofing is called a ply. In a five-ply roof, the first two layers are laid without a binder. These are called the dry nailers. Before the nailers are nailed in place, a layer of building paper is tacked down to the roof sheathing. A built-up roof, like a shingled roof, is started at the eaves so the strips will overlap in the direction of the watershed. Lay the building paper with a two-inch overlap. Cut a 16-inch strip of saturated felt and nail it along the eaves. Nail a full width or 32-inch 
strip over the first strip. Next nail the next full width strip with the outer edge 14 inches from the outer edges of the first two strips. Continue laying full width strips with the same exposure until the opposite edge of the roof is reached. Finish off with a half strip along this edge. This step completes the two-ply dry nailer. Start the three-ply hot with one-third of a strip covered by two-thirds of a strip and then by a full strip. Spread a layer of hot asphalt, the flood coat, over the entire roof. Sprinkle a layer of gravel, crushed stone, or slag over the entire roof. Lastly, we will now cover the roofing material estimating process. I won't leave you hanging on the math, I will cover the math needed here also. First, we need to know the roof size in square feet. Materials are estimated and sold by the square. A square is the amount required to cover 100 square feet of roof surface. So 1 square equals 100 square feet. You need to review blueprints and specifications for determining types of material and fasteners needed. Also determine what underlayment is required. Rolls are usually 36 inches wide. A roll of 15 pound felt is 144 feet long. A roll of 30 pound felt is 72 feet long. After adding for 2 inch overlap, one roll of 15 pound felt covers 4 squares, or 400 square feet. And one roll of 30 pound felt covers 2 squares, or 200 square feet. Now what flashing is required. Roof edges along eaves and rakes require metal drip edge and may require other flashing. Soil stacks and or ventilators require a corrosion resistant sleeve. Chimneys require roll roofing flashing, 10 inches up the chimney. Mortar or roofing cement will be required for flashing a chimney. Open valleys require metal flashing or 90 pound, mineral surfaced asphalt roll roofing. Roof and vertical wall intersections require metal flashing shingles that are 10 inches long and 2 inches wide than the exposed face of the regular shingles. For your asphalt shingles, you will divide number of squares of roof by number of bundles per square. OK, now let's cover some math for roofing. As I stated before, 1 square equals 100 square feet of roof. If you have a roof that isks a 10 by 20 shed roof, you will multiply 10 times 20, which equals 200 square feet, or 2 squares. If using either one roll of 15 pounds felt, which covers four squares, or 30 pounds felt, which covers two squares, you will only need one roll. For shingles, you know you only need two squares. However, you need to know how many bundles there are in the square. There can be four or five bundles to the square. If you know yours are four bundles to the square, you will need eight bundles. For flashing, you know two sides of the roof are 20 feet and two sides are 10 feet. Add them together and you need 60 linear or lineal feet of flashing. However, you will need to be sure your flashing overlaps 6 inches on each piece. Now, if you have a gable roof, you will need to do the math for one side and then multiply it by 2. If each side was 10 foot by 20 foot or 200 square feet, you will multiply it by 2, showing a total of 400 square feet for roof coverage. Remember one roll of 15 pounds, felt, covers four squares, and one roll of 30 pounds, felt, covers two rolls. Flashing must cover the length of the eaves and the rake on the gable ends. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button. And the like button, I would do it for you, because I like builders. Watch some of our other videos, so you will be ready for your advancement exam. Have a great builder day.